Hello, my name is Peter Parfit and welcome to the New Brick Workshop. I'm going to show you how to go about making a tray. Uh, this one is made from rosewood, it might be bubinga, I'm not sure. In the main, it's got a bit of veneered MDF uh, for the base here. And I've blinged it up a little bit uh, with some inserts at the end here made of maple. Now, although I've used my CNC to do parts of this, and I've used my router table to do some others, you could make this with simple tools like handsaw, a chisel, and you'd probably need to use a router in order to create the channels to take the base that are in the wood here. But I used my router table to do these box joints here. I've also used my CNC to inset uh, these maple bits of detail in the handles. And I'll explain the reason why I put these inserts in now. Now this wood is a little bit fragile. I was worried if I had made just an ordinary hand hole here and that I was carrying two dinner plates full of something rather delicious, uh, then the weight could cause a break here and here. And I really didn't want that to happen. Or if someone twisted, it, it might cause this handle area to fail. So what I've done is I've inserted this maple piece here, which is an exact fit using my CNC so that this strengthens up the whole of the end piece. And these are a couple of the cutouts from doing those handles. And this wood is about nine millimeters thick. It's got the most beautiful colour and the most beautiful grain. And as I said, I'm not sure if it's rosewood or bubinga. It's something like that. But you don't need to choose an exotic wood. You could use any wood that you wish. And I mentioned box joints. You may have seen my video where I showed you how to make a box jointing jig. And this was my practice go uh, for the box joints I've used in this project. Well, I'm just setting up to do the inserts for the end handles. Uh, this is a piece of maple, it's 10 millimetres thick, and I've got a quarter inch spiral uh, cutter in here. Now, the first bit I'm going to do is to actually cut out the bits where the fingers go, because I then want to take this away and just round off the edges uh, with my ordinary router. So I'm just going to do the internal cutouts. I've put some double-sided sticky on those bits which are going to be left behind after the cut is finished. Shows you how effective that uh, double-sided sticky tape is. It was quite uh, difficult to get out. But anyway, there's the start. I'm now going to put a small round over on both sides because this is where the hands will go through. And I've got a little rounding over cutter in there. It's one I got from Axminster a long time ago. Now you have to take care when you're doing this. Imagine this was a normal cutter. You would be going pushing forward like that. So therefore it would be cutting on this side. So I'm going to be cutting around like this and back around like that. So in other words, my piece of wood will be going up there, over, round and back there, around and over like that. And make sure at no stage do you get fingers anywhere near the cutter. Turn it over to do the other side. And it may be difficult for you to see, but that is uh, ni nice and smooth, just what I wanted. So it's back to CNC now. And you'll have noticed with this one, I've actually held the centerpiece down. What I've done is I've cut everything uh, to size in the width direction. I'm now cutting everything to length, but before cutting it to length, I've put a coat of Osmo on. And the reason for that is very simple. I want to be able to do some of the detailed work uh, without worrying about the glue staining the wood too much. So I'll be able to cut out in one of these pieces, put my insert in, glue it, and then once that's dry, and I can then sand that off without any of the glue having penetrated wood in any way. Now, I don't know whether this is really necessary, uh, but I'm, I'm doing it just as an extra precaution. Now, this is my test piece, and I've just put the 
insert in there uh, just to uh, make sure it's, it's about right. What I need to make sure uh, is that when I cut out this hole here, that this piece that's left behind doesn't fly off everywhere and cause a problem. Now I could use double-sided tape, I don't want to this time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a screw right in the middle here. And now I can screw this piece safely in place, so that's holding that nicely. Ah, that is absolutely spot on. Absolutely super. Just a job. And just before I do this final cut, just look how neat that is. Isn't that lovely? Absolutely super. Right, I'm now going to glue these in and I'm going to do it reasonably carefully. Not often I use my finger to spread glue, but I really want a nice even job. That's fine. I, I know that this maple is slightly thicker uh, than the bubinga, so that's fine. I'll now do the next one. And that's fine. So that's both of those done. I can now leave the glue uh, to go off. I can then sand these. Now I've set up the box joint sled and I've got a five millimeter cutter in this time. So I've had to cut a new uh, one of these insert pieces here and it's all set up. And I'm just going to now position the dust port in the right place. So that's set up. So now with my stock the right length, I'm going to produce the box joints that I need. Now I've marked the underside of all of these for reference. Obviously the handles are nearest to the top and so that's the underside of those. And I'm going to start by doing the long sides first and then I'm going to do uh, the short sides. And of course eventually we'll need to then cut the curve detail off these once that's finished. And I've had a practice go with some old pieces of uh, oak here and I'm happy that my setup is as accurate as it needs to be. So I'm now going to cut all of those joints. Now I'm actually going to take great care with these longer pieces because uh, it's so easy to get these out of vertical. And I've got a little thing here to check. That's it. That's okay. Happy with that. So that's the first one done at both ends and I'll now do the next long one. And again I'm checking that bottom is on that direction. Right well that's the long ones done. So we've turned one of these around so we've got the first full tongue as it were there and we put this one against it, again with the bottom in that direction. And once that's there, we're going to clamp this carefully in place. So having done that slightly more complicated setup this time, we're ready to go again. So there we have that uh, first joint. It's come together rather nicely. I'm going to continue and do the rest. So that's now all of that box jointing done. Now I've got to cut a channel for the base and also trim, trim these off. Uh, it's really important to get this spot on at 5.5, which is what I want for this, five and a half millimeters. Now I need to cut the base and so what I've done is, with it dry, I've squeezed up the joints and then measured the internal dimensions that way and that way. And then I've added 10 millimeters on, which is the amount that the base will go into the sides. 
I've actually set up the depth of the cut for the sides at five and a half millimeters. So it gives me about one millimeter wiggle room across each direction. Now my next task is to cut the channels in this. And at this stage, I've got to look carefully at my pieces of wood to make sure that I get the, the best face on the outside. And I can demonstrate this. This piece here has just a little bit of a defect, uh, which unfortunately I cannot sand it out. And so that's definitely got to be on the inside. And the other side is perfectly okay. And I've got to remember which is bottom. And in order to then make sure I get this right, I'm going to put a little you know, line which indicates where I'm going to be putting that channel. And I've got my own little sort of mishap here, which is a tiny little bit that's flaked off there. So again, I want to have this on the inside so it won't show. So I'm putting a line there like that. So that's that one done. I'm looking at this one carefully. And this one's exactly the same. It's funny. Just nicked the corner there. So again, it's going to be that way around for that one. And this one, yeah, that's the outside. And this will be the inside bottom. I'll just make sure all my bottoms are where they should be. Yep, all my bottoms are the right place. Now, there's one other thing. When I put this through to put the channel in for the base, I don't want it to run all the way through to the end because that will show. So I've got to remember to stop short of the end. Here's that first channel done. I'll now do the rest. And don't forget, if you want right angle cuts to within 0.0001 of a degree, use a track saw cutting station created with a path guide system. That's my piece cut out absolutely spot on. Right, it's time to start the glue up now. I've got my clamps ready and I've got the bits laid out here. I'm going to be using PVA glue. I'm going to uh, take it very carefully. I don't want to get too much excess anywhere. And I've got some warm water, a damp sponge here to take away any excess. Right, the, the glue is on. And now what I've got to do is to start squeezing up these joints a little. That's a, a delicate process. Mustn't put too much pressure on with this type of thing. I'm dealing with the excess glue straight away and after I've taken the worst off, I'm just going to use a damp sponge. Now I'm going to check for square. Now you've got to be very careful. When you have something like this, you put clamps on it both directions. There's a risk that the clamps can cause a bit of distortion along here. So you've got to be very careful. So I'm now happy with that. So I'm just going to leave that to dry. So that's it. The clamps are removed and I've just got a bit of cleaning up to do with the sander and then I can put some Osmo on this. And that's it, just about done now. I've got a tiny bit of filler to put in. This wood is quite brittle, and when I was doing a little bit of the work towards the end with the putting the channel in for the base, uh, a couple of little bits split away. So I'm touching that up and that will be no problem at all. Now I'm just starting uh, to put the PolyX on and I'm using uh, PolyX 3011 Clear Gloss. And this is what I use for almost every bit of indoor furniture uh, that I make now. I really like the finish. It doesn't dry to a really glossy finish as you might expect by looking at that there, but it does actually have the most subtle sheen. It's really nice. Now it's my intention to put two coats on this. Well I'm just putting the final coat on uh, this tray now and uh, I must say that this 
really does look good. On this Bubinga, it is a lot glossier than it would be on other woods, certainly oak. This is much, much glossier finish, probably because uh, the Bubinga does have a very fine grain and therefore one can uh, actually get it pretty smooth. Well, that's it. It's now finished. It's had its Osmo. The Osmo is dried and I'm really, really pleased with this. Absolutely super. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>